So before we jump into the main bulk of the song, let's go through a little bit of theory just so we can understand what to play over each chord. So before we start like learning all the intricate kind of filly bits between the chords, we're just going to learn the main chord progression. So we've got E minor, we've got G major, and if you can as well, when we, when we grab these major chords, we're going to try and use the technique that Stevie and Jimmy used, so this over the, over the top thumb rather than that stereotypical classic bar chord. So if you can, try and grab those major chords or minor chords with your thumb coming over the top. So we've got E minor, G major, we've got A minor, and then we're going back to E minor. Moving up to B minor. So what I've got there is B minor, down a semitone, down to A minor. Then we're going to go to G major again. Down to F major. C major. We're good on the A string. Then we're going to move up to D major. So just move up two frets. And then that's the full chord progression. So if I add in some strums to that. That's the main chord progression throughout the whole song. So in the intro section, we're going to cycle through those chords, but we're going to add in some embellishments over the top. Now when Stevie's playing, he's pulling notes from the relative pentatonic scale to the chords. So the main, the main bulk of the song is going to be an E minor pentatonic. But over each chord, we're going to try and change that a little bit. So the first chord, E minor, we're going to pull notes from this E minor pentatonic scale first position. Over the G chord. We're going to pull notes from the G major first position, G major pentatonic first position which is also the second position of the E minor pentatonic. So for this position, we've got three five, two five A string, two five D, two four G, three five B, three five E. So as we've got the thumb over the top here, it allows us to easily grab these extra notes with the pinky finger. We've got this classic Mia style chord, which is just made up of these notes from that second position pentatonic. So here I've got second fret G string with my first finger, third fret B string with my second finger, hammering onto that fourth fret with the third finger on the G. Kind of a D chord shape. Landing on that fifth fret D string. So that's kind of like a G sus chord. Just made up from those extra notes from the pentatonic scale. Also with major chords as well, we can slide up to our first inversion. So if you're not familiar with a first inversion, all we're going to do is change the root note of the chord. So each chord's made up of, of notes from the scale, so you've got the root, you've got the third, fifth, and then we've got the root again, the octave, fifth fret on the D string, that's a G major arpeggio. When we play this major chord, we've got thumb on the third fret E string, we've got that fifth fret D 
the uh, A string, which is the fifth of the, which is the fifth note in the scale, and we've got the fifth fret on the D string, which is the octave. So to make that into a first inversion, we're going to change the root note to the third of the chord. So instead of G being the root note, we're going to slide up to the seventh fret on the E string, which is now a B note. We'll also keep in the fifth fret A string and fifth fret D. So we've just stacked the chord in a different order. We've got the, the major third, the fifth and the root. So it gives you a kind of a different sound for this major chord. Also, when we slide up to this first inversion, it allows us to pick other notes around that chord. is that classic kind of Jimmy sound. So whenever we see a major chord in this progression, we're gonna try and add in that, that first inversion. We're gonna slide up to it. And we're gonna add in these extra notes. All of the possibilities we can go to over that G chord. We've got that Mi Sus chord. And then we've got that first inversion shape that we can slide up to. fleshed out that G major chord there. So E minor, first position E minor pentatonic, up to G, the next chord is A minor, so over this A minor chord, instead of sticking to the like the general key of the song, which is E minor. When we get these minor chords further up the neck, we're gonna add in something to make it sound a bit more interesting. So instead of just playing E minor pentatonic third position, which we can do and it's, it'll sound correct over that, that A chord, we're gonna use the first position A minor pentatonic. Essentially changing the key over this A chord. Add in those blue notes. So that's what we're going to play over the minor chords. After A minor, we're going back to E minor. E minor pentatonic over this E minor chord. Next chord we've got in the progression is a B minor. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do the same thing that we did over the A minor chord. We're going to essentially change the key. We're going to use that B minor first position minor pentatonic. A minor, same thing again, A minor, first position pentatonic. Then the next chord we've got is a G major, or a G major variation. We've got thumb on the third fret on the E string, third finger, fifth fret uh, D. We're going to leave the G string open, third fret on the B string with the first finger, and then we're going to use the pinky to grab that fifth fret on the E string at the bottom. Just slide that up, two frets, back down, down to F, still got the same chord shape. So 
we're not going to play any embellishments over this part. After this F chord, we're going to move over to C major, which is just a standard first position bar chord, rooted on the A string. But like we were doing with that G major chord, and as I was saying, we were going to do other major chords, we're going to move that up into its first inversion. The same method applies, we're going to change this root note to, to the third, to the major third, which is going to be on the seventh fret on the A string. We're going to bar that fifth fret D and G with the first finger. So I'm sliding from that fifth fret on the A string with my third finger up to that seventh fret. And again, we've got access to these new notes. And then we're gonna move over to our D chord, which is exactly the same again, but two frets higher. We're gonna do the same thing, slide up to that first inversion. position over D. So we're basically finding ways to tie in the pentatonic scale around the chord. So let's quickly recap what we've just discussed. We've got E minor, we're going to use the E minor pentatonic. Move over to G major. Use that second position minor pentatonic which is also the first position major pentatonic around this G major chord, it fits nicely around the chord. We can also slide up into our first inversion over the major chord. So sliding up to that 7th fret on the E string. Really fleshing out these chords here. Over to A minor, we're going to use our A minor first position pentatonic. Back down to E minor. We don't have to stick to this first position. We can go up to this, up to the 12th fret. Over to B minor. B minor first position pentatonic starting from that seventh fret. Down to A minor. Down to our G chord. That G major variation. Slide up two frets. Down to F. Moving over to C major rooted on the A string. Slide up to our first inversion. Back down again, pulling those notes from around that new position. Slide that up two frets to our D chord, moving up into that first inversion. And then ending the riff in that first inversion D shape. So that's some basic theory on what to play over the chords in the intro section of Little Wing.